What is up guys, in today's video we're going to be going over essential Fortnite tips that every player needs to know. Some of this stuff might be pretty basic if you've been playing the game for 4 plus years you probably already know about this. This video is kind of made more for people who just started playing the game or took a long break from the game because I've had so many people comment on my videos recently telling me that A they either just started playing the game or B they came back recently this season after a really long break. So this video is going to be geared more towards those people but if you have been playing Fortnite for four plus years there may be some things in this video that you could learn or just reinforcing and being reminded of some of these things can be really beneficial if you guys do enjoy this video find it helpful remember to give it a like subscribe if you would like to see more and comment down below when you started playing fortnite or how long you've been playing fortnite personally i started the second day battle royale was added in september of 2017 i quit playing in chapter 2 season 3 and then came back kind of in the middle of chapter 2 season 8 so i've played for a really long time also, today's video is going to be sponsored by The Coldest Water. They make these insulated water bottles that are designed to keep your water cold for up to 36 hours. And one thing that I really like about them personally is that there is no like condensation or like water seeping through the bottle that you might, would find with a lot of other like water bottles. And that's really good for gaming because if I go to drink or anything like that, I don't have to worry about my hands getting wet. There will be a link down in the description below where you can go to order one of your own or just check them out. The first thing we're going to talk about is going to be a few settings that can be helpful in game. These are like kind of lesser known settings or things that are more in the menus. A lot of people, if they try a new game, they might look at like their keybinds and their sensitivity. And those are going to be the settings that they kind of like focus on. But these settings are more miscellaneous, but they're also really helpful. The first thing we're going to talk about is visual audio. You can find this in the audio tab. And what this does is it puts a little indicator on your screen of various things like chests, player footprints, shooting, vehicles, and even reboots. Uh, this can be really helpful if you have a hard time like hearing the audio or tracking where people are based on audio. Visual audio can be a really good setting. A lot of players really like this and find it overpowered. Personally, I don't use it. I find it really overwhelming and I'm already like pretty good at using sound to my advantage. But if you find yourself having a hard time tracking people based on sound or you're always getting caught off guard by somebody, this visual audio setting can like change your life. Literally, it's really good. A lot of people like it. I'm just like weird for not using it. Uh, auto sprint is another setting or sprint by default. I really like this setting. It doesn't apply to the new rodeo sprint that we have that was added in chapter two or chapter three, season two, but it's just your basic normal sprint. And what this is going to do is make it to where you always have ideal movement. If you're in a build fight and you get bumped by your build or have to go through a door, you won't lose any momentum by having to reset your sprint. And you won't have to bind normal sprint. You still will have to have a bind for the rodeo sprint. But I recommend everybody use sprint by default. Another thing is going to be tap to search slash interact. This is going to make it much easier when looting chests and opening boxes it's not the biggest deal but it's another one that i think is pretty good also auto open doors is another like somewhat miscellaneous setting that i personally use and think is worth using so those are some like basic settings or more like miscellaneous settings that are really helpful for a lot of people and that like most fortnite players use if you just started playing the game again you're probably going to want to use those settings uh I talked about this in a previous video and many other videos, but Fortnite is a third person game and the camera is not directly center. So if you peek from the right, you have to expose less of your character than if you're peeking from the left. So you want to set every fight up where you're peeking from the right, whether it be from a tree, a doorway, uh, whether you're on your own builds, whether you make an edit play on somebody, you want to be peeking from the right as much as possible. The peeking from the left can be somewhat okay sometimes if you just have to do it or you're like so ahead on damage and you just want to kill. You think it's going to catch somebody off guard. But a majority of the time you want to be peeking from the right because you have to show way less of your character to actually peek from the right. And that's going to give you a huge advantage in a fight. So peek from the right as much as you can and try to make that like muscle memory in your head. Like focus on it as much as possible until it's something that you don't have to think about at all and you just kind of do it automatically because it is going to make a huge difference in your gameplay. That is like one of the biggest things in Fortnite is just right shoulder peaks, especially if you're somebody playing the zero build mode because there is less that goes into that mode mechanically. So if you have a right shoulder peak on cover, you're probably going to win the fight. If you open your map, there's a little sidebar that has information on it, like how much the storm is heading for. That's really helpful to know if you're in a situation where you have to move through zone. You might have to like make decisions or like get to zone faster depending on how much it's heading for. And then you can also see how many teams are alive. This is really beneficial because if you're in a situation where it's duos and it's five people, three teams, you know that it's a duo and a solo. So if you kill the duo, you're going to have a much easier time. 
But if it's you, your duo, and three other people, and they're all individuals, like if it's five people, four teams, then you know that it's you and your duo and then three solos, and you can play that accordingly as well. Like being able to do that math quickly in your head and understand like how many people translates to how many teams can give you a better understanding of how you want to play the fight and how you want to who you want to focus in a fight. If you see the duo fighting a solo, then you want to focus that duo that way that you and your teammate will be the only duo remaining. And it's like that for every team game mode pretty much. So if you're ever wondering like what the status of the game is or how many teams there are remaining, that's a good little marker to know. And like I said, that sounds really basic, but I've seen people that have played this game for years that were like unaware of that completely. The way Bloom works in this game is really obvious, but basically the way your crosshair is, if you were to make a circle around your crosshair, like the little dashes, if you connect the outer edge of every dash, your bullet can go anywhere within that. So to maximize how many bullets you're hitting with a weapon that has Bloom, you want to make sure as much of that surface area is on the person. If you're only going for headshots, but half your reticle is on the person, you're probably going to end up missing more shots than if you just put a majority of your reticle center mass and maybe only the top end on the head. This is also true with shotgun shots. The pellets can distribute anywhere within your reticle. And I've seen a lot of people have like part of their reticle or like the bottom part of their reticle on the opponent's head. And then they get confused on why they're hitting for low damage. It's because half the bullets aren't hitting the person at all. So you want to maximize how much of your crosshair is on the opponent. You can still go for headshots, but maybe make sure that little dot is towards their neck. That way the top half of their crosshair is on their head and the bottom half of their crosshair is still on their body. So you could do that to kind of maximize how much, Basically, the way you reduce RNG in this game is you maximize how much of your reticle is actually on the person and less about like just aiming straight for the head. For controller players, you want to organize your inventory in such a way that the weapons you use in succession are right next to each other. For example, typically after using your, if you're using your assault rifle and somebody gets close to you, you're going to want to use your shotgun. So having your shotgun one swap away from your AR is really beneficial. Having your SMG one sh swap away from your shotgun is really beneficial because a lot of people go from shotgun to SMG. And then if you're using something like a sniper or shockwaves, it's good to put them one before the assault rifle. And if you're playing on controller, you want to put shotgun first and then just organize everything around that. The reason why you want shotguns first is because if you pickaxe and then build and then try to switch weapons, you're going to be on slot one and... That's what you do when you take somebody's wall. So you want to put shotgun on slot one so that it's as easy to get to after pickaxing or after building. Uh, and you just organize everything around it. A lot of newer players feel the need to put their AR in slot one, but you actually want your AR in slot five, as you'll see in a lot of my gameplay. If you're a keyboard, you can do whatever you want. But for controller players, I'm telling you, you want shotgun in slot one as often as possible. It's also pretty important that you set your keybinds up that way you have to take your thumb off the analog stick as infrequently as possible. If you're someone who has paddles or plays claw, this can be really beneficial. But if you're someone who plays non-claw, non-paddles, you're probably going to have to make some sacrifices because you only have the two analog sticks for binds that you have to that you can hit without taking your thumbs off the analog stick. I will likely have a video later in the future for ideal keybinds for every different type of player in Fortnite, like normal non-claw, non-paddles, claw players, and then paddled players. But yeah, put like maybe your jump and your crouch button on the analog sticks. That way you can do those things without taking your thumbs off the analog sticks. If you're a zero build player, if you do play builds, then you're probably going to need building and editing on buttons where you could take where, that you can hit without taking your thumb off the analog stick. So focus on that when you're setting up your keybinds. The reason why you don't want to take your thumbs off the analog sticks is because if you have to take your thumb off the analog stick to jump, for example, then it's going to be much harder for you to hit jump shots because you can't aim while jumping. That, that's what it comes down to. Uh, rotating dead side of zone is something that's really basic in battle royales, but it's something that a lot of people struggle with. I should have a clip here on screen to kind of demonstrate this, but we have a zone that's on the far northeast side of the map above Daily Bugle. And so a lot of people are going to be coming in from the southwest side of zone just because more of the map flows towards zone that way. So if you rotate far right and then play the northeast side of zone like we ended up doing in this clip, you're much less likely to get third partied and you're much more likely to get to zone safely. And in this spot here, we needed heals. So rotating dead side of zone can be really, really good. Just look at what the more isolated side of zone is. If the top right side of zone is just the edge of the map, then that's going to be the safest place to be because most people are going to have to come in from the bottom left just based on how the map works. And you can do that for like any zone. And you could use that both ways. You can go dead side of zone 
to get less conflict but if you're looking for people then you want to go to like the other side of zone the non-dead side um for landing in this game this is something that I, I feel like a lot of people struggle with because a lot of other brs are different but once you reach a certain altitude you pull your glider and you can no longer put it away and this is really important because if you're gliding above mountains you might get glider locked early so when landing you want to avoid flying over mountains as much as possible and dive towards like examples like edge of the map or areas with water that way you can get even lower without pulling your glider and getting glider locked you also get glider locked when you shoot yourself out of a cannon when you pull your shoot so if you shoot yourself out of a cannon you do not want to pull your shoot just hit the ground based like normally if you do have to correct some sort of like angle with it like if you're trying to land on a mountain or something try to pull your shoot as late as possible because once you pull your glider after shooting out of a cannon you're glider locked for good if you are landing and somebody else is going to land on you and you have the choice between landing on a chest or landing on a gun, landing on the gun is pretty much always the better choice because you're going to have a gun right away. Like, let's say it's a white pistol on the ground or a chest. Sure, it's possible that you could get a gun that's better than the white pistol from the chest, but it's also possible you could get like a sniper, which is not going to be good in that initial 1v1. And just having the guaranteed gun faster is going to be better because oftentimes people have to like take time to open the chest so when you have the option of landing on one or the other try to land on the gun that way you can kill the person before they open the chest if you do have to 50 50 a chest with somebody the gun always comes out of the chest on the right side so try to position yourself blocking the opponent from seeing the right side or just crosshair placement on the right edge of the chest and start spamming your pickup button and you'll usually get the gun um bounties are in this game so you can pick up a bounty at various pois to find where somebody is and what's good about bounties is it's often going to mark the team that's closest to you so if you want to know if there's any people nearby you can just take a bounty and on the flip side if someone gets a bounty on you just try to remember where the bounty boards are and then you can kind of predict where the person is going to be coming from based on where the nearest bounty boards are and your threat level will go up when you get closer to the person I've seen a lot of people get confused by this, but let's say I'm playing with my friend Sammy and they get a bounty on Sammy and I start running one direction and the threat level goes up for me. It means I'm getting closer to them, not that Sammy is getting closer to them. So yeah, the threat level is individual regardless of who they're targeting. That is your own proximity to the bounty. Other games do not work like that. Like Warzone, for example, works the opposite. But in Fortnite, your threat level is your own individual proximity to the people that have a bounty not the target necessarily so that that's good to know because i've seen a lot of people like kind of get confused by that there's heal vending machines at every gas station on the map so if you're really sh like scuffed for heals going to a gas station can really help you out each heal vending machine sells a shield item a white heal item like bandages or med kits and there's an instant heal option that you can just heal white health for 200 gold so if you're ever in a pinch and you don't have heals or you're somewhat in game and there's no heals at all for you and you're really weak then trying to find the nearest gas station can actually be really beneficial or if you're low on heals rotating to the nearest gas station at any point during the game will allow you to be able to buy shield and you just get gold for looting so you probably have a lot of gold and you also get it for like doing bounties and stuff but just by looting you will have a good amount of gold you can also buy stuff from npcs and just basic vending machines but i feel like everybody knows that but not as many people know that every single gas station on the map spawns a heals vending machine every single time that's just the way it works um with the new mantling mechanic you can actually shoot while you're in the mantle at the like end of the animation i've killed like a good amount of people like this and left them very confused uh, get that timing right and you can mantle up on people and shoot them before they're even prepared and just get like really good damage and it catches a lot of people off guard if they're like a level above you and you just mantle up and pump them you can ping in this game there's a bind for it check the key binds and find out what your ping bind is and you can ping things for your teammates the amount of people i've played with who say like oh there's a guy over here and they don't ping or this guy right there and they don't ping is like super tilting so make sure you're pinging as much as possible uh, when you're calling out like that, if you don't know how to describe where something is, just ping it. And you can also ping loot for your teammates. If you're really far away from somebody and you kill them or you see loot really far away, you can actually ping the loot to see what it is. And that's really beneficial if you're like camping on a blimp this season and you need some like a specific type of heal or maybe you need shockwaves. Being able to ping people's loot and see if it's worth going down for is, is really nice. Uh, if you're a controller player, you have two different options 
for your sensitivity, you have linear or exponential. Linear is typically going to be better for shotgun shots, building and editing because it makes you get to your like fast sensitivity as quick as possible and instantly, whereas exponential, your sensitivity kind of slowly increases based on how fast you move the analog stick. And this is kind of good for make like hitting targets long range. So if you're someone who only plays zero builds, I would recommend playing exponential. If you're somebody who plays mainly normals, I would recommend playing linear. If you play both a decent amount, I would still recommend playing linear. I play linear and I'm able to still hit AR shots really far away, but it is much easier to be accurate long range on exponential. So if you only play zero builds, I would definitely recommend maybe checking out exponential or staying on exponential because it is what the default is. If you do change your settings though, and you go into the advanced options, I would recommend turning the boosts off completely, just putting them all to zero because it makes things really inconsistent and different every time you try to aim. So you just want things to be as consistent as possible. That way you can be accurate. And when it comes to choosing your sensitivity, your base normal sensitivity, I think is important to just set that up for your hip fire. Whatever feels good for hip firing is what your normal sensitivity should be. And then you can kind of set everything else accordingly. You can set your build sense and your edit sense according to whatever your normal sense is. And then your ADS sense is the same way. It's another multiplier. So start with your normal sense, what feels good hip firing. And then change your ADS sense to whatever feels good ADSing based on that initial sense and then build and edit sense are the same way. So that is going to be it for this video. If you guys have any more tips that you think are essential that every Fortnite player should know, comment them down below. And also, like I said, comment down below how long you've been playing the game. I'm interested to see that. If you did like the video, give it a like, subscribe. I stream on Twitch every day. It'll be linked down in the description. Thanks for watching.